Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Restore Vitality and Burn Fat. I mean, I'm sure a lot of you want me to just get into the tips and the tricks to just burning fat. And like, what can I do right now? What supplement can I take? What exercise? You know, how can I do this fast? But in reality, you know, I, I set it up here called re, it's about restoring your vitality. It's about getting as healthy as possible. And then the consequence or the good part about that is when you do that, you're going to do things like have more energy, have better sleep, uh, be able to burn fat, be able to build muscle and to reach your health goals. So this is really about, yes, there's going to be, you know, tips and resources about burning fat, building muscle. But really, this is about getting your body into a healthy metabolic state. And as you'll learn throughout this PowerPoint and through this webinar is that your metabolic state influences just about every aspect of your health. But I want to start uh, by doing what we always do and just sharing some updated pictures here. So this is the O'Neill family, myself, Dr. Krista. This is our oldest, Michael, our middlest, Jake, who's four years old. So Michael's seven, Jake is four. And our youngest is Jocelyn, and she's two. It's amazing to see them flourish and to really understand health and to make good decisions with their health, and it's fun to teach them. It's fun just to see their little personalities come out. Um, you know, you, you see yourself in your kids, the good and the bad. You know, I see a lot of myself in Michael, our oldest. He's When he focuses, he's very smart, very imaginative. He has a sense of humor. He likes to talk a lot. I don't know where he gets that from. <laughs> Jake is just much like his mother. He's very strong. He's very confident. He knows what he wants and he's going to get it if he, you know he's he's very much shows a lot of tendencies of being a little leader which is which is really cool just like his mom and then jocelyn of course being the youngest child she's very funny uh she's doesn't take much from her brother she gives it right back she's very cute very sweet very empathetic so it's been it's just been a blast getting to know them every day and seeing them grow up and really like lead, living and leading this lifestyle with them so our, our mission is to lead and inspire others to reach their full health potential. That's what it's all about. So I want to let you know whether you've been a patient of ours for five plus years, maybe just over a year, maybe you just started, it's your first six months, wherever you're at, we want you to know that we're doing this with you. Like we're living this life with you. Like this isn't just something I talk about. This is something that we live on a daily basis. The way that we eat, the way that we exercise, the way that we get adjusted for ourselves and for our kids, we're patients here as well. And we're learning here as well with you. We also have another new addition. So as many of you know, Haley is back from maternity leave. We're very happy to have her back. And her and her husband, John, have a new little bundle of joy. So this is baby Haven. Haven uh, was born on November the 28th. And John and Haley are doing great with her. You know, I, I look up to them as parents. I mean, they're they're doing amazing. Um, with that little baby and she's just a happy healthy little thing and uh, we love to see her when she comes into the office to get her adjustments and Haley is excited to be back to help to lead and inspire you guys as well through resources through nutrition coaching so she is a certified holistic health coach and she is back and ready to help you guys move to the next level with your health all right now we move to this picture um, you know personally as a doctor, you know, I've seen a lot over 11 years, but I have not seen so many people sick as I have, you know, at the end of 2023 le leading into 2024. You know, I thought I did when, remember when Omicron happened at the end of 2021 leading into 2022, I was like, man, there's a lot of people sick right now, but it was kind of, everyone had the same thing. They had the little sniffle and the sneeze. It was kind of like a mild cold, but I mean, and, and you guys probably know it too, whether it's stomach bugs, whether it's the flu, whether it's COVID, whether it's RSV, we're just seeing, whether it's pneumonia, we're just seeing this explosion of all of these different viruses and bacteria just kind of having their way with people. And it's really, it's, it's almost hard to watch. You know, thankfully, as a family, we pretty much went through unscathed and we made sure to use the protocols that we know and the action steps that we know that we can share with you but really this is a symptom of a country of a culture of a world 
that has been under a lot of stress over the last few years, a lot of stress, whether it was COVID, whether it was lockdowns, whether it was mandates, whether it was all the uncertainty that's happening, there's a lot going on in the world and it's a stressful place. And what can happen is, is that if your body gets stressed out, that's going to negatively impact your metabolism. And when your metabolism, when your energy systems of your body are impacted, that's going to affect your immune system and how often you're getting sick and really your energy overall. So not only will this talk help you with burning fat, building muscle, having better energy, but also having a better immune system as well so that you can go through these crazy times and, and come through largely unscathed. Okay, and the other thing too, more so than any other time in practice that I've noticed, is there's definitely been a surge in overweight and obesity that's been documented. It's now up to 41% of Americans now falling into the category of obesity. So that's gone up nearly 10% since I started practice. So in the last just 10 years, that's gone up, I believe, eight points, which is crazy. Uh, and I, I hear a lot of people say like, uh, you know, I feel like I'm trapped in my body. I feel like I can't, um, I can't lose weight no matter what I do. There's a lot of normalizing health issues out there. You know, being overweight, being obese. I'm not here to shame people at all. It's it's not really about that. It's just about explaining that, like, listen, there's health risks to this. Very obvious health risks when you're overweight, when you're carrying more weight. It puts more stress and pressure on your joints. It puts more stress and pressure on your heart on your internal organs, on your immune system. These are known things. So by losing weight, it's not just about image. I don't want it to be about that. It's about health. It's about your health so that you can feel better. And then yes, as a consequence of that, most people feel a little more confident when they've, when they've lost a few pounds or lost a few um, pant sizes or dress sizes. And many of you know my story. It was back in 2022 where I, I kind of let myself go. I was 25, uh, yeah, 25 pounds heavier, 23, 25 pounds heavier than I wanted to be. And over that time, I lost about 22 pounds. Now it's been a bit of an up and down. I can tell you what I learned a lot. I, I know, like, listen, I know from experience, number one, it is not easy to lose weight. It's not. Anything, you know, the first seven pounds or maybe even the first 10 pounds might be easy. But to get in those last 10 pounds, those last five pounds to lose those and keep them off, I know from experience that it's not easy. I get it, um, but it, you got to put in the work, and we're here to help you help you do that. So, what is your metabolism? So, simply put, our metabolism is how our bodies take carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins, and minerals, and turn them into energy or heat. So, your digestive system breaks down these macronutrients into sugars and acids that your body uses as fuel. You can use this fuel immediately or it can be stored energy in your tissues such as your liver, muscles, and body fat. So think of energy like a currency in your body. So you're either going to spend your currency or you're going to save it. Now in the real world, we want to save more than we spend, right? Well, in our bodies, we actually want to spend a little more. Uh, we're saving too much. This is kind of the opposite of like a financial talk. What I would tell most people with their energy is they're saving too much of their energy. And when you save too much of your energy, that's going to overwhelm your liver. So things like fatty liver that people have heard on, heard about, and also your body fat. So that's going to increase your waistline. That's going to increase your pant size. You're going to start gaining weight in places that you don't want to. So the trick here is we have to turn your metabolism up so that you start spending this energy, you start burning off this fat. It takes time to do it, but it can definitely be done no matter where you're at with your health. This was a statistic that jumped out to me. I, so I, I never take statistics at face value. When I saw this on the slide, like, okay, I'm, I'm clicking on this link, I'm, I'm reading this article, like I wanna know exactly what this is. Cause to me, this sounds extreme. That 93% of Americans, suffer from a metabolic disorder. So I'm just going to read it here. A study in 2022 looked at cardiometabolic statistics leading up to 2018. So these are this is even from 2018. So cardiometabolic equals health factors that affect the function of the heart. So they looked at blood pressure, 
blood cholesterol, blood sugar, weight, and the presence or absence of heart disease. And it showed that 93% of Americans are metabolically unfit. They use statistics again as of 2018. So do you think that's gotten better or worse since then in the last five, six years? So if I told you that like 93% of a certain animal species, like let's say a, a, a water buffalo, 93% of water buffalo in Africa had a disease. How would you think about the survival of that animal species? You'd be like, man, the water buffalo are in bad shape, 93% of them. Yeah, they're eventually going to do what? They're going to they're going to have major problems. They're going to go extinct. Like again, we we hear about the problems with like polar bears as an example. Well, imagine if I showed you 93% of polar bears have a disease process. You'd be like, oh my gosh, that's terrible. What I'm telling you now is that 93% of Americans suffer from a metabolic disease and they don't even know it. So, again, don't. Here's what I don't want you to do: is to just think that you're part of the 7%. Statistically, you're not. Statistically, you're not. And I, I'm going to show you that right now. So these are some of the most common warning signs of metabolic disorder, metabolic disease. So fatigue. If you're getting to the, a certain time of the day and you hit the wall and you need caffeine, you need coffee, you need an energy drink, here's your that's your sign. Thyroid issues, the number one prescribed prescription drug in the state of Pennsylvania is Synthroid, is Synthroid, because so many people are having thyroid disorders. Why? Because when your metabolism is affected, your ability to take food and turn it into energy, that stresses your thyroid out. It has to work harder. And if that's happening over months, years, decades, well, all of a sudden it's going to get disease process and you have to start replacing those thyroid hormones synthetically through something like Synthroid as an example. Uh, suppressed appetite. You're waking up in the morning. I have many conversations where people say, you know, I wake up, I'm just not hungry, so I don't eat. I don't eat till dinner time because I'm not hungry. <laughs> and I'll, they almost like, like it's a good thing, like it's a badge of honor. And I'm like, that's not good. Within the first half an hour, like once you like you you wake up, and I get it, you can, might feel a little groggy or whatever. You have a couple glasses of water. Pretty soon after that, I would say within the first 30 minutes to an hour, you should start feeling hungry. That's a sign your, your body's like, hey, I want food. I want to start burning some energy. I need some energy. Being cold. Like I said earlier, your body takes food and turns it into energy and what? Heat. So if your metabolism is low, your heat process in your body is going to be altered. Cold hands and feet is a, is a consequence of that. Low libido, sex drive, PMS, bloating. Uh, extreme, you know, more extreme menopausal symptoms. Like there's a reality to the transition of life for women, but it shouldn't be to the point, you know, hot flashes, things like that. Those are signs that your hormones are out of balance. And, and we can talk about that at a different talk. We also, just so you know, for women especially, uh, we do run a new test at the office called the Dutch test, which is focused on testing your sex hormones like estrogen, stress hormones like cortisol, and can give direct action steps to help to balance those out. Uh, the other big one, uh, another sex hormone is progesterone too. Anxiety and depression. So your brain doesn't say, ouch, I hurt like your neck or your back, but it'll give you signs of like anxiety, worry, depression, like lowered and altered energy that can be due. There's many, many factors. I understand that, but it can be due to, to altered metabolism. Hair loss and brittle nails. There can be some vitamin deficiency, mineral deficiency there as well. Insomnia, not being able to sleep. Infertility, if you can't give energy to yourself, you're not going to be able to give it to, to another um, life in your body uh, if, you're, if you're stressed out metabolically. Irritability and then obesity as well. So these are some of the symptoms you can read through that list. Now this is a this is a, a direct example here, an excellent example of, of how cellular aging, how cellular aging affects your body. So basically cellular aging is how fast your cells turn over. Bluntly translated is how fast you and I turn over, how fast you age. For example, we all know someone who aged gracefully, they look good, they felt good in their 80s or 90s. And on the flip side, we all know someone who didn't age as gracefully and we say things like, well, they she had a hard life or he's been under a lot of stress. 
but we forget that there is a cellular process beneath the skin that caused that. So there's going to be two pictures I'm going to show you here. Um, these two pictures are side by side in the Andre Pazdiev Museum. This museum caption reads, on the left, the artist Eugene Stepanovich Kobuchev, the day he went to the front in 1941 in World War II. So he's a Russian soldier. And this picture on the right is in 1945 when he returned. Um, yeah, it's, this is a picture that's hard to look at. Obviously, this is still a young man that has seen a lot and has aged a lot in that short amount of time. So it says on the caption in the museum, this is the human face after four years of war. The first picture looks at you, the second one looks through you. What has happened due to obviously extreme mental, physical, and emotional stress that's caused this young man's metabolic process um, to be altered and has led to rapid cellular aging, which not only affects how you look, how you feel, but literally takes years off your life. And it's a, it's a very sad picture to look at, but I just wanted you guys to see that because it's just a, just a real example of how stress and extreme stress, and you know, we may not be under the amount of stress that he was under. We're not getting shot at. We're not being, you know, threatened to be killed every single day living outside in the cold of winter and everything else that they went through. But you can have financial stress, familial stress, relational stress. All of these different things can add up over time and, and start to take a, wreak havoc on your body. So let's get into how, how this happens. Okay, so what are... What basically messes up your metabolism are three things. Your thoughts or emotional stress, trauma, physical stress, and then toxins, which is chemical stress. So thoughts, traumas, and toxins. And these are things that largely we can control through our lifestyle. So when we look at our lifestyle, these are the things that affect it. It's your age, your genetics. You cannot control these things. You can complain about them. You can vent about, it. oh, I hear it all the time. People like, well, that's easy for you, Dr. Greg, because I'm getting old. Or wait till you're 60. I, oh my gosh, I tell this to people now. I, I had a brand new patient the other day. They had their first adjustment and they're moving around the table a little slow because they're stiff. Now, and they're in their early 30s. And they say, oh, it's just, I guess I'm getting old. And I say, just so you know, and I say this to almost all my patients, Every time you say that, one of my brain cells die. So please don't say that. You're not getting old. You're, you put your body in a place where you're not in the best shape right now. You're not feeling good right now. That doesn't mean that you're getting old, okay? Because in effect, you cannot control these things. And the reason why we want to jump to these things, we say things like, well, my mom had it or my dad had it, genetics, or I'm getting old. Because we would love to say that we can't control something because then it's not our fault. And this is basically what the medical world does a lot. They'll say you have bone on bone in your knees and they'll say it's genetic or it's your age. They'll, they'll, they'll say that all the time. It's your age or it's genetics. There's nothing you can do about it. Therefore, it's easier to put you on a prescription. It's easier to offer a surgery. If there's nothing that I can do about something, then someone else has to do it for me. A drug has to do it. A surgeon has to do it. When in reality, these are only two factors. Because what are the other factors? Your diet, what you eat, your exercise, or lack thereof, and your overall lifestyle. And these are the things that you can control. And this is the beautiful thing, is you can control these things, you can change these things, no matter where you're at in your life. You can start to make changes. And this is why we love, and this is why we live out these five essentials. This is the whole basis. This is the, the spine, if you will, of our office. Chiropractic care, nutrition, mindset, exercise, minimizing toxins. Outside of emergency like trauma events, this is all you need to boost your health. This is like 90 to 95% of your health right here. So again, a lot of people, you're, you're listening to this, you're watching this right now, 
and you think you got to run to this doctor or that doctor, you got to get this test or that test, or you got to take this drug or that drug or get this surgery, I'm telling you, 90 to 95% of your problems you're looking at right now. Now, the, the positive of that is 90 to 95% of your solutions are staring you right in the face right now. That if you can be a B student in each of these areas, bring yourself up to a B. So how would you rate yourself chiropractically? Are you doing your home care exercises? Are you making your appointments? Are you even a chiropractic patient? Are you getting your spine adjusted? Nutrition, how well are you eating? Are you eating clean whole foods? Are you avoiding sugar and processed junk? Your mindset, how are you talking to yourself? What's the inner dialogue going on in here? What are you doing for self-care for yourself? Exercise, are you exercising? Are you exercising enough? Are you exercising hard enough? Minimizing toxins, whether it's cleaners, whether it's cosmetics, whether it's personal care products, there's a lot of things that we can change and begin to change in our life. So you can, what I like to do is look at these five essentials, kind of like looking at your hand, and you grade yourself on each one, A through F. And then the goal is to bring each one up to a B, unless it's already there, bring it up to a B, and then go from there. I tell this to new patients. I do what's uh, an x-ray review class or an introduction to chiropractic. I call it a doctor's report that every patient has sat through. And I'll say, if you can be a B student across the board, bare minimum, you're going to have amazing health. You're going to have amazing health. So change can start right now. Right now. I'm telling you, if you're listening to this, you've been called or chosen to listen to this for a reason. And you can start making change for you. It's very easy to say things like, oh, man, I wish my husband would hear this. I wish my wife would hear this, my cousin, my friend. It's easy to say that. Focus on yourself right now. Be the change that you want to see in the world. This is one of my favorite quotes from Thomas Edison 100 plus years ago. The doctor of the future will give no medication, but will interest his patients in the care of the human frame, diet, and in the cause and prevention of disease. That's chiropractic. That's a chiropractor. He was talking about chiropractic back then. Now, the cool part, cool story about Thomas Edison is he was actually a patient of one of the very first chiropractors, B.J. Palmer, in Davenport, Iowa. So they often uh, were meeting together, and they were both kind of obviously inventor types. Basically, B.J. Palmer got the chiropractic profession off the ground and moving and founded many of the chiropractic professions and was really a pioneer in chiropractic. And Thomas Edison was one of his patients. And he said this about chiropractic, the doctor of the future will give no medication but will interest his patients in the care of the human frame, diet, and the cause and prevention of disease. So B.J. Palmer said, nature needs no help, just no interference. So our bodies are designed by God to be healthy. We have genetics in us that are wired for amazing health. We're meant to feel good. We're meant to sleep through the night. We're meant to get up without pain. We're, we're designed to have amazing health. And our body doesn't need help to heal. So if I cut my hand, right? I cut my hand, there's a cut. Just as long as I get out of the way, I don't put dirt in it, I don't touch it. Like when you're a little kid, what, what are you told by your mom? Don't touch it, don't touch it, don't interfere. Get out of the way your body will heal itself. Well, that same power that heals the cut heals every aspect of your body. And it doesn't need our help. It just needs us to get out of the way. The problem is we love to get in the way. We get in the way with our food, with our thoughts, with our actions. We're getting in the way a lot and interfering with the body's ability to heal. And so what controls that, that healing, is your nervous system, your brain, your spinal cord, your nerves. So your brain is in your skull, protected by your skull, like a helmet, and forms into your midbrain and your spinal cord. So it's all one continuous thing. So think of the spinal cord like a long tail of the brain. And it's not a wireless connection, it's a wired connection from your brain through your spine. Your spine is like armor that protects the nerves as they come out, and they go to your muscles, they go down your arms, down your legs, but they also go to literally every cell tissue organ in your body. So what is the most important system in your body? It's your nervous system because it controls everything else in your body. For your heart to beat, for your lungs to breathe, 
for your food to digest, for your metabolism to function, that's all under the direct control of your nervous system. So having a healthy nervous system is the key to having good metabolism, is the key to having good health. It all starts here. And really, that's where chiropractic comes in. This is the foundation of chiropractic, is that your spine is what protects and surrounds your nervous system. So you have 24 separate bones. You have your skull, like I mentioned, 24 bones. Some of you have 25. Some of you have an extra bone in your body. It's about one in a thousand people. Uh, 24 bones that surround and protect the brain stem, the spinal cord, and the nerves as they come out. Each vertebrae, each separate bone is separated by disc material, largely made of water, also chondroitin, glucosamine, and collagen. So just essential nutrients that you get from animal, from uh, meat products, basically, animal byproducts. And these discs are meant to flex forward, extend back, laterally flex from side to side and also rotate. So not only is your spine, it's your spine's job to protect nerves and arteries, it's also its job to move, to be able to move and to be able to do that. So when your spine is moving well, that's a sign of health. When it's not moving well, that's a sign of sickness. So we hear things like degenerative disc disease, degenerative disc disorder, spinal stenosis, Chiropractic, we call that subluxation, misalignment of the spine. And largely, this comes from this comes from repetitive microtrauma. It's the little things that we do that inch by inch, cut by cut, if you will, start to chip away at our spinal health. It used to be like, I think it was like my, I would say my grandparents' generation, maybe they're hurt out on the farm. You know, they were hurt at work. It was like parents' generation, sports accidents, sports injury, things like that. And it's more my generation or even maybe a little younger now. It's cell phones. Growing, I, I didn't really grow up with a cell phone, but kids now, they're, they like have a cell phone at like six years old. When your head is at zero degrees, it weighs 10 to 12 pounds. At 60 degrees, it now weighs 60 pounds, putting 50 more pounds of pressure on your neck. So... People complain about shoulder tension, stiffness in their neck, not being able to check their blind spot. Hold your phone up. If you're in the office right now, I know some of you are sitting there on your phone. Hold your phone up. Sit up tall. Give your spine some love. You, you come in here. You're getting adjustments. You're paying good money to do that. So you have to do the work at home. And number one is your ergonomics. You have to start holding your phone up putting your computer in a good place so that you can get good function of your spine so that you're not injuring it throughout the day. So this is what's called, these injuries are what are called subluxations. Subluxation is misalignment of the bones that puts stress and pressure on the discs, on the bones themselves, and also on the nerve endings. So we hear things like disc herniation, disc bulge. Uh, basically what happens is, is when these spinal segments get out of alignment, it creates localized inflammation response. So swelling, tenderness, pain, and that can affect the nerve flow from the brain to the body and from the body to the brain. So we experience this as symptoms, symptoms like pain, discomfort, things like that as well. These are some of the warning signs of subluxation. So in adults, you have headaches, migraines, largely those come from the neck. Uh, neck pain and shoulder tension, again, coming down into this area here. Numbness and tingling, whether that's coming out into your fingertips, down into your feet, down your leg. I want to go back to migraines for a second. The same migraines, I would say 95% of the time come from the top two bones in the neck if they're out of alignment. That's going to affect the nerves as they go to your eyes, to your stomach, also to your inner ear. So many times people with migraines feel dizzy or nauseous from their stomach and inner ear being affected, and then also have like scotoma or aura where they see bright lights or they see like a fuzzy fuzziness in their eye. Uh, I've been able to help many, many patients with migraines. I once had a young woman who had migraines so bad that she could go basically blind. So one day, as an example, before coming into my office, she would be driving down the road, she'd feel a migraine coming on, she'd have to pull over 
because her eyes are about to go blind. It's called a scotoma. Do you remember like uh, the old school TVs and you'd see the fuzzy white, like the snow on the TV with the bunny ears and stuff? Imagine you just saw that in your eyes, how scary that would be. And since coming in, like I've been seeing her for years now, she doesn't get migraines anymore. She doesn't have to worry about having to pull over uh, to the side of the road. I mean, what a scary situation that would be. So, and that's coming from chiropractic care, unlocking those top two bones in the neck. Lower back pain sciatica pain down your legs stiffness across your lower back low energy when your spine is out of alignment it causes an increase in the stress hormone cortisol and that's going to affect your energy levels hip and knee issues especially if they're just on one side versus both that's a sign that there's a pelvic unleveling going on and then pain between your shoulder blades and mid-back pain again these are just a few symptoms now what about children so children, the symptoms look a little different. Typically kids, although sometimes they can, it's not so much pain and achiness and stiffness because they may not be able to um, portray that or convey that to you. But things like acid reflux, heartburn in a child, frequent sickness, allergies and asthma, something that I personally dealt with when I was younger and which was helped through chiropractic, attention and focus. When your spine is under stress, it puts your brain under stress. An adult may feel tired. Uh, usually a child is the opposite. They get hyperactive. Poor sleep, waking up during the night. Eczema and skin issues have, are related to also the food that you eat, but also have been related to spinal health. Poor posture, scoliosis being an example, or forward head posture from being on a cell phone. Ear infections, constipation, gut issues. And then in younger children, colic and croup. So uh, croupiness, whether it's coughing or incessant crying, which would be called basically a child that's just unsettled. Kids that get adjusted, some of the most common things that parents will say, especially to Dr. Krista, because she's seeing the majority of children, especially ones under two years old, they're just like, my baby's more relaxed now. They're more calm. They're more still. They're able to just kind of be in their body versus be stressed because their nerve system, the baby... How, when you look at a child, I'm almost like it's like looking at their nervous system. They're just kind of like looking at you. They're trying to figure out the world. And when they're under stress and they're crying, they're not going to be learning. They're not going to be understanding what's going on around them. They're going to be focused on what they're crying about. And when a child is adjusted, it helps them to hit these developmental milestones even quicker or at a more normal rate. And so if you're you're listening to this, whether you're sitting in the office, you're watching this outside of the office, like, have you had your kids checked? I would urge you and implore you to get them checked. And some of the reasons people give, like, I, I get it, we're all busy and yada, 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 but this is your child's health. This is their health. Have you had, has your spouse been checked? Have your children been checked? This is a great opportunity to, to bring them in. Now, we always offer this. This is a, a standing offer that we have at the office. Children, family members, immediate family members get 50% off any initial exams or x-rays. It's a very simple process. When they come in, we'll do an exam, take x-rays if necessary. If they're young, we typically don't. Uh, and we're able to see what's going on. And then you'll know what's happening with their spine. And you'll start to see changes in their health for the better, for the better. And I, I get it. People... We can get so focused on running their, running your kids around for sports or for school or for extracurriculars. There is nothing, nothing more important than your child's health for their physical body. For their physical body, there's nothing more important than your child's health. So you want to prioritize their health at a young age because that's what they're learning now. They're learning from you. What you prioritize, they're going to prioritize. If you're not prioritizing health, do you think they're going to do it when they're older? Or they're just going to run around with, like a chicken with their head cut off, going to sporting events and stuff that, yes, it matters. Yes, it matters. I'm not saying that it doesn't. But in the grand scheme of life, your health matters that much more because it's going to set them up for habits now that they're going to take into adulthood. Okay. Structural correction. One thing that we do here that's unique and different is we're not just wham bam thank you ma'am get adjusted this is about correcting your spine getting it into an optimal alignment so one thing you notice is we we take x-rays we're able to base our technique 
off of those x-rays and able to tell uh, to the degree to the millimeter that your spine's out of alignment so that every adjustment is tailored specifically to you. You're getting a very specific adjustment based on your x-rays. So let's go through the normal x-rays, what they should look like. So from the front, your head should be level. So if you look on the x-ray on the left here, you see the eyes, you see the mouth, your head should be level, your spine should be straight. So basically the dots there should be lining up with the green line. Your head should be straight, or sorry, your head should be level, your spine should be straight, pretty simple. Same thing goes for the lower back from the front or as chiropractors, we look from the back, your pelvic bones should be level, your spine should be straight. From the side, you want to see, so here's on the left image, you see the teeth, you see the eyes facing to the left here. So you want to have a nice curve of the bones. This curve of the bones protects the brain stem, the spinal cord, and the nerves. So we're able to measure where you're at compared to normal. So it should be at 45 degrees. The image on the right here is your lumbar spine or your lower back from the side. You want to have a nice curve here. So typically with people with back problems, herniated discs, disc bulges, almost I could I could just say 100% of the time they've lost this normal curve in their back very common that people have lost the curve in the back very common that people have lost it in their neck so how do they do that it's through sitting poor posture cell phones computers hard work labor manual labor that's going to affect these discs and joints so let me give you a few examples this woman here named jennifer she's in her 60s you can see how instead of having so instead of having her head level her head is tilted to the left and because of that her spine then compensates over so there's a lot of pressure on the nerves coming out of the left side of her neck so this is what's commonly known as a head tilt and this is something that she had noticed for years her friends family had noticed for years She's like every time i take a picture i notice that my head is tilted she didn't think that this is something to be corrected now her main symptoms were severe neck pain and loss of range of motion, checking her blind spot, sitting at a computer, getting up out of bed in the morning, her neck like just always hurt her, always felt uncomfortable. So again, she had done massage in the past. She had done chiropractic in the past. No one had ever taken this specific x-ray. So we were able to see, like, listen, you need to be adjusted over here. You need to be adjusted over here. The left side at the top, right side at the bottom, it seems complicated. It's kind of simple once you know how to do it, but what we got to do here is get these bones back into alignment. So she went through a corrective process. Four months later, this is her new x-ray. So you can see now her head is basically level. Her spine is straight. No more neck tension. No more neck stiffness. Friends, family members, everyone notices. They're like, oh, your head isn't tilted anymore. Your posture's better. You're standing taller. She's like, yeah, and I'm feeling better too. Going to, she's going to get adjusted. All right, so here's one. This is Jenna. She's in her 30s. You can see the left hip here, right hip here. Her hip is shifted to the right by 12 millimeters. And then she has two curves going on, one at 10 degrees and one at eight degrees. This tells me that it's been there a long time because the spine will compensate one way and then start to compensate the other. So for Jenna, she was dealing with consistent lower back pain and stiffness and really like the muscles here on either side of the spine in those areas on your flank where you can feel a lot of pain across your belt line, very sensitive to the touch. So I remember with, with Jenna, when I would work on the muscles on her, on her back, she, she'd basically be like moaning in pain. She's like, oh, like it would be very sensitive to the touch because those muscles were so tight called hypertonic because they were under stress. And so after four to five months of care, here's her newest x-ray. So cool to see this. You can see now her hips are essentially level, spine is straightening out. I was just working with her the other day and I asked her if I could use, um, use this example. And I was working on the muscles on the side of her back and I'm like, hey, remember when you used to like wince in pain? She's like, oh yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I remember this used to be like really hard to do. And now we can get in there and actually work on those muscles because their spine is nice and straight. When your spine is out of alignment, when you have subluxation, that stresses the muscles. They're going to be sore to the touch. So if you're dealing with like tension in your back, tension in your neck, or you know someone else that is, 
they're dealing with a spine that's out of alignment. So again, this is about getting to the root cause of the problem, the root cause of the problem. Okay, here's an example from the side. This is Dana. Dana's in her late 40s. So you can see how from the side, instead of having a 45 degree curve, her neck was coming the other way. And due to years of this problem being there, that had caused degeneration in her lower neck. So you can see the bones have changed shape the discs have started to degenerate so much so that her head is forward by almost two full inches, actually over two inches. So a lot of neck tension, numbness and tingling in her hands. The main one for her was headaches. Because of the tension on the spinal cord and on the muscles leading up into the skull, she was dealing with almost constant, consistent headaches. Here's after five months of care. You can see now, I mean, this is an amazing change really good correction here now instead of having a negative curve her now curve is well into over 20 degrees and her head has come back more over her shoulders again co-workers people have noticed her posture has changed but the biggest person who has noticed it is her no more headaches much less neck tension much less neck pain no more grinding clicking popping when moving the neck so again Grinding, clicking, popping, that's a sign of spinal degeneration. That's a sign that your spine is out of alignment. And now she's not dealing with that anymore. Here's a young, uh, young man in his 20s. He's actually a young Amish man. And he was dealing with severe lower back pain. So he works roofing, uh, manual labor, and then also some sitting, some office work as well. So from the side of the lower back, she had a 35 degree curve. He was only at 21, so he lost 40% of the curve. And that, even at his young age, was putting more stress and pressure on the discs, especially at the top here in the T12 and the L1 area. So through chiropractic care, so she, he was dealing with consistent back pain. His back would feel like it would be going out on him. This is four months later. You can see the nice curve coming in. When you get that curve, those muscles and discs can open up. They can relax. Those nerves can relax. No more back pain. Feeling much better. Functioning much better. Just like getting up out of bed in the morning, not feeling stiff, not feeling sore. I want to tell you what all these people had in common. They weren't perfect. I'm not saying that. But they all did very well with their home care exercises. This is huge. Again, you're listening to this right now. You're in the office right now. How well are you doing with your neck traction at home? How well are you doing with your wobble cushion, your sleep rolls? your prescribed stretches, okay? Because if you're not doing them consistently, you're not gonna get the change that you, wanna, that you wanna see, period. I've seen it, again, for 11 plus years. If you don't do your home care, yes, you might feel better from the adjustment, and that's important, the adjustment's gonna help you, but if you're not doing your home care, you're not gonna see the change on the x-ray. You're not gonna get that structural correction. So this is a kick in the butt for those of you listening right now. If you want help, we will drop your home care sheet for you. So you should have a booklet at home. You should have a prescription sheet or a, a home care sheet that shows which exercises you're supposed to be doing. If you don't know where that is, that's fine. Come tell us. We're not going to make fun of you or shame you or anything like that. We will draw a new one up for you. We will explain it to you. We love questions. I love when people ask questions about their home care. How can I hang this up properly, get the neck traction right? How many wobble am I supposed to be doing? How, how often should I be on my sleep rolls? I love questions like that because it, make, it means that people are doing it. What I don't like, what kind of just, it makes me feel, I sound like a parent now, not angry, not upset, just like disappointed when I hear people say, oh, I haven't even brought my stuff out of the box yet. People that have been patients, you've paid money, you've been coming to this office, you've been putting your time, your money in, your energy, and you haven't even taken out of the box yet? I mean, come on. Again, I'm not here to shame you, but like, let's step it up here, guys. We can do better with our home care. And, and I'm not just, I'm saying this for myself too. I can be better. And the last week leading up to this talk, preparing for this, I have been better. The last week, I'm like, you know what? If I'm gonna tell people to be better, I'm going to be better myself, doing my wobble cushion, doing my sleep rolls at night, doing my neck traction. And the cool part about this, here's, here's the caveat, the, more, uh, the better that you do with your home care now, the less you have to do later. 
Because the cool part about all of those people that I showed you, they don't have to do as many home care exercises now because their spines are getting more into a more normal alignment. So then it becomes about maintenance versus constantly trying to correct your spine. There's people, you're listening to this, you've been coming to us for, for five years, we're still trying to correct your spine because you're not doing your home care. We're supposed to get most of the correction, the vast majority of within that four to five months, the corrective care. So, okay, so you're listening to this, you've just started, do your home care, you know, start out well and you're gonna end well. If you're listening to this, you've been coming in for years, you haven't gotten the correction that you wanna see in your x-rays, put the time in now, over the next six months, the next eight months, before we take your next set of x-rays and you'll see amazing, amazing change with your spine. Because this all boils down, it all boils down to this, is that yes, correcting your spine is important. Yes, getting your nervous system stress-free is important. But this is about your overall wellness. And this is well documented. So this is a study that was done. They took 300 people, or actually, sorry, 600 plus people over the age of 65, and they split them up into two groups. One group, they said, okay, you're going to see a medical doctor as your primary care physician. The other group said your primary care will be a chiropractor. And they studied them over five years. So the only difference between the two is that one group was getting adjusted an average of one time per week. Some were getting adjusted every other week. Most were getting adjusted one time per week. And this is what they found. The chiropractic patient group spent only 31% of the national average on healthcare expenses. So they saved 69% on their healthcare bills. They had 50% less medical provider visits. So less, they're not going to the physical therapist. They're not going to the medical doctor as much. Their health habits were radically better than the overall population, far less cigarette consumption. 98.5%, basically everyone believed that the care to be considerably or extremely valuable to their overall health. The chiropractic patient group had 60% fewer hospital admissions, 59% less days hospitalized than the medical group, 62% less surgeries, knee, back, hip surgeries as an example, 85% less pharmaceutical costs. If we want to change healthcare in the United States, we want to change healthcare in the world. Imagine we could reduce our costs of pharmaceuticals by 85%, reduce surgeries by 62%. That would change healthcare. We wouldn't be bankrupt in the healthcare sector. We could start, you know, take that money and, and put it into our kids and our future rather than just putting it into people who are consistently and constantly sick. We need an overhaul in health. And that starts, I believe, through chiropractic care because the proof's in the pudding. And many of you listening to this, you've seen the changes in your own life, okay? This has helped you, but we need your help to spread it to other people. Listen, I have a radio show every Sunday. Uh, approximately 2,500 people listen to it. I'm doing the webinars. I'm out at home shows and booths. I'm doing what I can to help people in chiropractic, and I've been doing it for a long time. I understand you're not a chiropractor. I get that. But like this starts with you, and it starts with your family. That it's not just you. Because look at this. Imagine there was this study, and it was on – because some of you are doing this study yourself. What you're saying is it's like, okay, I'm in the chiropractic group, and my family's in the medical group. I go to the chiropractor, but my family doesn't. So that means over time, you're going to have 85% less pharmaceutical use than your family, 62% less surgeries, 59% less days hospitalized. I'm sorry, but that, that's not a study that I would want to do because I want my whole family in the chiropractic group. I want my whole family on less prescriptions. I want my whole family less pharmaceutical costs, less surgery, less, less all that stuff. Absolutely. So again, you're listening to this. Yes, I'm getting fired up because, you know, people come in here on their own and that's fine. You know, I get it. But it's 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 time. It's time to get your family checked. It's time for your entire family to reap the benefits of chiropractic care. People say things like, well, my husband's skeptical. My wife's skeptical. Great. Tell them come in for a first visit. I love skeptical people. I love it. You know, I grew up. In, in more of a medical household. My mother was a nurse for 43 years. 
my mom goes to the chiropractor. She's been going now, what, past six, seven years, and she's doing great with it. She loves chiropractic now. So it's just about getting started. It's about people understanding. The more you understand chiropractic, the more you're going to move towards it. The more you understand medicine, the more you're going to move away from it. So again, I would suggest if you want to get your kids checked, your spouse checked, you can go to the front and make an appointment for them or talk to, talk to myself, talk to Dr. Krista, talk to one of the staff members. It's a very simple process. All right, let's get into food. Talk about chiropractic. I'm really happy that I talked about chiropractic. You know, a lot of times in these talks, I kind of breeze over it, but I really, really, that was really good for me. I, I enjoyed that. I hope you guys did too. But let's talk about food and that, how food is actually the number one cause of inflammation in your body. So if you're having swelling of joints, um, stiffness or like poofiness in your face, water retention, things like that, that's likely due to inflammation and that's largely made up of the food that you're eating. So food can be incredibly nourishing or incredibly damaging to the body. So let's look at some food chemical interferences and, and then also nourishing foods we can replace them with. Because again, I wanna, you know, kind of the slide says chemical interference is food. Good food is nourishing to your body. Bad food is an interference. 73% of the food found in the grocery store is ultra processed junk. Wow. So this is from uh, Dr. Robert, Robert Lustig, Professor Emeritus of Pediatrics, Division of Endocrinology at the University of California, San Francisco. 73% of our food is ultra processed junk. Wow. So that's pretty much sums up the standard American diet. The standard American diet, or what's known as SAD, is characterized by highly processed, sugary, and refined oil-rich foods, or as Dr. Lustig calls it, ultra-processed junk. Essentially, this is the majority of what people are eating. Because if 73%, I mean, the grocery stores, they do something pretty simple. If people buy it, they're going to sell it, okay? If people don't buy it, they're not going to sell it. So if 73% of the food found in the grocery store is junk, that means that that's the majority of what people are buying. So you can sit there and blame the grocery store or you can blame the government or blame whatever else. In reality, if we don't buy this stuff, they won't have it in stock. But since we're buying it, that's what they have. So in reality, this is our fault because this is, these are the choices that we make. So we have to be conscious of our choices, realizing, okay, if I'm walking into the grocery store, the vast majority of this stuff is stuff that I should not have. So I have to know how to read these labels and, and do what I need to do to, to get the good stuff. So the max, the max living approach focuses on maintaining a lifestyle that is focused around maintaining optimal health rather than simply a fad diet or temporary plan. So again, this is about eating for your health not just like a fad. This is having a plan. This is like your day to day, every day, what you eat, not just to get healthy for a month or a season in your life, but to just get healthy overall. So when we're looking at this, it's very simple. We want to think, okay, food made by God, good. Food made by man or altered by man, bad. So eating whole foods, meaning you know where it came from, it's minimally, minimally processed, you're avoiding packaged foods. You're getting naturally sourced proteins, grass-fed organic where possible, and no added sugar. Okay, so number one, focusing on healthy meat, eggs, and dairy. Number two, vegetables. Number three, fruit. Number four, other healthy carbs, which we'll go through that too. Like, for example, quinoa you know, rice is okay at times, you know, sourdough bread, things like that. Um, you want to limit too many carbs, like carbs are good, but you want to be largely getting your carbohydrates from veggies and fruit. Now, here's the cool part, and we have entire swap lists for this. Dr. Chris has made, and, and Haley have made an amazing document that you can enjoy the foods you love to eat, whether it's pastries and cakes and drinks and things like that, you can do them in a healthy way. Now, you don't want to have them all the time, right? You don't want to have cheap food all the time. 
But instead of just having like a cheat day where you go back to those processed foods, you can still have those yummy things that you love, but made in a whole food way. Let's start with fat because fat is really, well, it's extremely nourishing to our bodies, but it can also be extremely damaging to our bodies if it's the right kind, wrong kind of fat. So fat is essential. And I would argue that people in general aren't eating enough good fat. So good fats are what we call here the hero fats. These are fats that benefit our brain, heart, cholesterol levels, cell growth, and more. These include things like avocado, wild caught fatty fish, raw nuts and seeds, unrefined oils, coconuts, and more. Um, I would really, with oils, I would stick to coconut oil, avocado oil, and olive oil. Those are the main three that we use. So avocado, I probably use the most. It's very versatile. It can go to a high temperature, 500 degrees Fahrenheit. It pours and has the same consistency like olive oil, but it can go to a higher temperature and it's super healthy for you. Costco is a great place to get coconut oil and avocado oil because you can get larger quantities of it at a much lower price than buying it at, uh, at regular grocery stores. So the villain fats are bad fats uh, that do quite the opposite of what the good fats do. They damage the heart, promote inflammation, contribute to obesity. These fats include refined process oils, fast foods, fried foods, trans fats. So these are the things that we know we shouldn't be eating. So like fried food, French fries, chips, pretzels, many forms of bread. These are all the things that contain bad fats like vegetable oils, canola oil, sun, uh, form, different forms of sunflower oil. Some of them is good, some bad. And things like uh, even like soy get put in there as well. So we, in general, it's, it's pretty easy because again, all you have to think is food made by man, good, or sorry, food made by man, bad, Freudian slip, food made by God, good. What about carbohydrates? Where they say, don't blame the don't blame the burger for what the bun did. So you want to have good carbs. So your good carbs, again, it's your fruits and veggies. That's where you want to get the majority of your carbohydrates from. Now, things like whole milk or goat milk, they contain a good, good carbohydrates as well. So basically like good healthy animal products, fruits and veggies, those things are, you're basically genetically designed to absorb and process those things. But when you're getting carbohydrates from ultra processed foods like candy, like soda, like grain based desserts, I read recently that the number one sources of sugar for people are grain based desserts and soda. So if you just cut out soda and grain based desserts, like again, like cake or brownies or muffins and things like that, or ice cream, you're gonna drastically reduce those bad carbs and you can replace them with good carbs. Because carbs are good, but you gotta get the right kind. Processed foods and sugar, which I was just touching on, these are the things that have, um, they're, they're basically consumed by, it's the most widely consumed food in the United States. Like I said, 73% in the grocery store. So research shows the adverse impact of these dietary choices on both metabolism and the heightened risk of obesity. These dangerous effects extend beyond weight concerns as these food items have been linked to various metabolic disorder. So the refined nature of these processed foods, meaning they contain preservatives that are very difficult for the body to break down, they get stored in your fat cells of your body. And when you have a lot of toxins or processed things stored in your fat cells, your body wants to hang on to that fat. It doesn't want to release it because it doesn't want to release these toxins into your bloodstream. So that's where, again, if you've been overweight and you've been overweight in a long time, it's going to take more time to lose that weight because not only do you have to lose the weight, but you also have to detox as well. So processed carbs and sugar, sugar substitutes. Uh, these would be things like, you know, the pink packs, the blue packs, the yellow packs foods containing bad fats, again, any type of processed food. So again, like if you are buying stuff in the middle aisles of the grocery store and it can sit on the shelf for five years, you shouldn't be putting that into your body. Now here's my favorite. I love steak, first of all. I love steak. And your protein 
increases your metabolism. It increases calories out because um, essentially, again, you, you take food and it turns into energy and what? Energy and heat. When you have, eat protein, it produces more heat in your body. It's called the thermic effect of, of, of protein. It costs more energy to break it down. Now, the beautiful part about that is if you're someone with cold hands, cold feet, I would say right away, well, you need to start eating more protein. Now, here's the calculation. You want to be eating half your body weight in grams minimum. So typically for most people between 80 to 100 grams a day. So what would that look like? That would look like 20 grams in three meals and then two snacks, each having 10 grams. I'm going to go over that in, in a minute here of what that would like realistically look like. But think of like eggs for breakfast, maybe some kind of chicken salad for lunch, maybe like a grass fed burger or steak for dinner. And then you're having like some kind of protein shake or or protein rich bar somewhere in there for a snack. And that's going to get you to your required amount. And when when you reach that amount, you're going to notice a huge change in your energy, a huge change in your metabolism just by getting your protein intake up. And the quality is really important because meat gets a bad rap because typically the meat that they study is from conventional farms. And yes, all the problems you see with conventional farming, whether it's effect on the environment, effect on the cows, effect on, you know, effect on the food product itself, all those things are true which is why we need to move away from conventional farming. Again, if we change our spending habits, they will change their, their, their uh, consumer habits as well because they're not gonna sell these products if no one's buying them. But since everyone's buying them, they're gonna keep ramping up. So this is where in Lancaster County especially, we have a wonderful area where you can have local farms, grass-fed beef, pasture-raised chicken, there's CSAs available, there's the farmer's markets, throughout Lancaster County available where you can know the farmer, know the product that you're getting so that you're getting good, healthy meats. And it's important because there's a balance uh, in the fat of the meat between omega-6 to omega-3. And you want that ratio to be about two to one. You want for every one part omega-3, you want there to be two parts omega-6. That is something that your body's genet genetically designed to recognize and break down. With conventional farming, because these cows a lot of times are fed things like corn and grain, that changes the fatty acid content of the meat and the omega-6 levels go up it, to like 20 to 1 or 25 to 1 ratio. And then that is something that your body doesn't recognize as much and it sees as a processed food. So it's not, not a healthy form of protein. And again, this is really important for protein and making sure that you're supplementing it my favorite this is our favorite variation we've gone through in max living many different variations of our protein powders by far this is my favorite by far so it's called the pure path bone broth protein powder and this is from the bone like basically bone broth that has been dehydrated and put into powder form it's sweetened with stevia and it's flavored with chocolate all natural flavors like this is really high quality. And this is this comes from regenerative farms. So it's like the next level. It's like beyond organic, meaning like not only does it come from cows that are grass fed, but it also comes from pra from farming practices that add topsoil to the land. Do you know that in the United States in about 50 years, we lost 2,500 years worth of topsoil due to conventional farming and runoff? Regenerative farming looks to put more soil on the land by year to year through proper farming practices and some would say biblical farming practices that are not only healthy for the animal but healthy for the environment. Listen, I'm not a tree hugger here or anything like that, but there's a reality that you want carbon to be in the ground, not in the air. There's a reality to that, you know, politics aside. So this is something where you can have a product that you know is made with care, but also made with thoughtful quality so that you're putting good stuff into your body and you're putting good stuff back into American, American uh, soil and farming practices. 
All right, <clears throat> so how do we put this all together? You got your carbs, you got your fats, you got your proteins. We put this together through the core plan and the advanced plan. So the core plan is choosing organic where possible, consuming higher sugar plant-based foods earlier in the day. So like if you're gonna have um, your fruits and stuff like that, stick to earlier in the day so your body has time to burn it off. Eating more healthy fats while eliminating all the damaged fats. Choosing naturally raised animal proteins, what I just talked about. And then selecting whole over refined carbohydrates. Okay, now the advanced plan, so the, the core plan is basically, again, it's, it's meats, fruits, veggies, and healthy carbs. Other healthy carbs like sourdough bread or quinoa, things like that, or certain beans. Now the advanced plan is a little more restrictive where you're even gonna, for a period of time, if you're really looking for home, hormone repair, this used to be called the healing diet. For just like a month period of time, I wouldn't do it too long. Some people can do it longer, but I would even restrict those higher carbohydrate fruits and stick to like, and again, this is all outlined, Granny Smith apples, grapefruit and berries as your carbs from fruit and really focusing on the meats and veggies and cutting out all other carbs. And by doing that, you're gonna get your metabolism back working for you and then you can switch to the core plan for maintenance. So if you want more information on this, if you're sitting in the office, you're gonna to wanna to look to your left and that's going to be the resource center. It has the core plan and the advanced plan outlined exactly there. There's recipes, guides, grocery lists, everything is there for you. So this is an example. I've kind of I updated this a little bit. Uh, this would be an example meal guide for this. So this is largely what I have day to day. So for breakfast, typically do two eggs scrambled. Oftentimes I'll add in some organic shredded cheese. I'll use this True Made Foods veggie ketchup. It has zero sugar. It's sweetened with butternut squash and carrots. It actually tastes good. I tried many ketchups. This one tastes good and it's kid approved. People come over to our house, we have guests. They do not notice the difference. It just tastes like regular ketchup except it has no sugar. It's sweetened with um, those vegetables. And then I'll have uh, either uncured turkey bacon or turkey sausage and then fruit. Uh, mangoes, kiwi, raspberries, blueberries, I've been into um, strawberries lately, depending on the time of year is when I'll get different, uh, different types of fruits. Okay, for lunch, I love, and if you want this recipe, we'll make sure to email it to you, and you can just type this in Google too, the Max Living Chicken Salad. One of my favorite recipes, we have this once a week, it's just a staple in our house, it's quick to make, it has everything you want in it. So we, we typically make it, it's got your chicken that's chopped up. We put it with chopped up celery, cucumber, pepper. We usually add a little bit of cheese in there like Munster cheese and avocado. And then it's also um, mixed in with this Primal Foods um, avocado oil mayonnaise, which tastes really good. Again, kid approved, kids love this salad. It's so good, it's portable. You don't have to heat it up. You just stick it in the fridge. It's an awesome, Awesome thing to just to make quickly and to, and to do on the go. And for dinner, we're looking at either like I'm doing pasture raised chicken or, or grass fed beef burger or steak or salmon, something like that with some kind of carb. On the core plan, you're thinking sweet potatoes or quinoa. If you're on the advanced plan, more like rice cauliflower. And then I like green beans. I mix it in with this Kerrygold butter and that's a Great way, again, kid approved. This is a great way to get all your protein in throughout the day while eating healthy. And this is just a just a kind of a general meal guide that I stick to. Now, obviously I switch it up. This is a general, like a one day in the life type of thing, but this is a good place to start. Meal prep, we've started over the last year, a little more than a year. We've been using Green Chef. This has been great. So you hear of like uh, Blue Apron as an example, they were kind of the pioneer in this area. Green Chef is certified organic and they use grass fed beef. They use organic pasture raised chicken, wild caught fish. And basically they come in these brown bags. They have all your ingredients that are portioned out. They also have your meat in there too. So you, when this comes, I believe in this area, it comes on a Tuesday. We put these in the fridge. One by one, you take out the bag, it gives you the recipe. It's kind of dummy proof. 
you you go through you make the food and and this gives us a way to have foods prepared that we otherwise wouldn't um you know have my wife and i aren't the best chefs so this is a good way to have just like yummy but also a good variety of foods while also having the help too so green chef is a great way for meal prep hungry root is another one that we found that's also very good i i would rate green chef personally number one we've also done if you're looking to not even have to prepare your meals that they just come ready to go this would be called factor meals I believe it used to be company used to be called factor 75 but just type in factor and it comes ready to go so this is especially great for people i will say my one critique of this is that and you'll even notice in the in the pictures here there is a lot of meat so the protein content's a little high this is especially great for athletes people doing crossfit people doing sports so like young teenagers and stuff like that i heard a patient talking to dr krista about this the other day they're like yeah we got our factor meals and i told the boys to put them in the fridge and they're like oh we already ate them all like kids and teenagers especially just love these because you literally just take it out of the packaging i would not recommend microwave i put it in the oven or toaster oven to heat it up and then bang you're ready to go put it on the plate and it's it's super simple we did this for um for a few years did factor we may get back to it it looks like they've updated it recently snacks okay this is my bugaboo area funny story this was the area i had to change when i was losing weight a year and a half ago i had to cool it on the snacking i was just realizing i was eating way too many calories throughout the day and it was largely to do with the snacking recently and i don't know if i'm trying not to have a lisp here or anything i'm on day three or four of having the invisalign for teeth correction years ago i had braces and slowly over time my teeth started to shift so i'm getting that corrected and with invisalign anytime you want to eat like because i have to wear this at least 22 hours a day i have to take the the trays out eat my food and then you know pretty much you know wash out my mouth with water make sure i'm somewhat clean and then put them back in so with snack this is going to help me i think i'm going to lose weight and i was talking to the dentist and some of the people who work there i'm like i think this is going to lead to weight loss because like normally there was a few times yesterday that i'm recording this where i went to just like graze or just grab a couple snacks and i'm like oh i'm wearing these i don't feel like taking them out so i guess i'm just not going to have that extra snack which is good because this will help me uh adhere to the rules that i've set so here are my rules keep meals and snacks separate where you can get into trouble is if you're preparing one of those meals that i showed you and all of a sudden you start snacking on something you're adding unnecessary calories right before you're about to eat don't eat when you should drink many times like if you're if you know you're hitting your protein macros you're hitting your carbs you're hitting your fats you know you're eating adequate amount adequate amount many times when you're hungry it's out of habit and really hunger in many ways can mean thirst so drinking a glass of water will many times satiate that hunger response in your body eat for fuel not for emotional comfort easier said than done i mean i, I get it we've all done this for me personally when I have a big day, there's a lot going on. Like even now that I'm recording this talk, uh, I know afterwards my brain will be a little spent for talking for two hours and preparing for this. So I'll be like, normally I'd want to go eat like a lot of food. That was kind of how I was, I don't know if it was how I've raised or just how I have deal with life is that when I am stressed or going a lot, I want to eat food at the end of the day, especially. So I want to make sure that i'm eating and you're eating for fuel not for emotional comfort not for emotional comfort here's some snack ideas that are um very easy that i that i turn to so granny smith apples they're good with like almond butter or hazelnut butter healthy version of hazelnut butter protein powder and water sounds gross but it's actually very good that bone broth protein the chocolate bone broth protein i'll often have that in the office in a mason jar i'll put a scoop in take it to the office I'll pour water in it, shake it up and drink that. And I'm just, that way I'm getting 20 to, depending on how much I pour in, 20 to 30 grams of protein a shot. And that's going to help to satiate hunger and give me the protein that my brain needs to keep going. Sprouted nuts and seeds, when they're sprouted, they digest more like a plant because nuts can be hard to digest for your gut. Uh, fruits and veggies, obviously, 
cheese dairy, like cottage cheese as an example, or you know, cheese sticks, things like that. Dark chocolate. I've kind of chilled out with the dark chocolate recently, probably because I've gotten the Invisalign braces and it can be a little messy <laughs> to try to clean up in your mouth, but I love dark chocolate. It's great. I'm definitely eating a lot less than I used to. I think when I was losing weight before, I was doing like a bar a day or something crazy like that. Uh, but definitely go for darker is better, 80% plus dark chocolate. 80% meaning that's the cacao content versus sugar and carb content. So you want to go to a higher percentage. All right, here's some resources. So if you pull out your phone, pull out the camera app and hover over this QR code, it will take you directly to our lists for um, grocery lists, meal planning guides, advanced plan, it's all there. Or again, if, you, if you're in the office, if you look to your left, you're going to see the resource board there. There's printed resources. If you want them digitally, you can hover over this. So again, take your phone out. I'll give you a second here. Hover over this QR code. It'll bring you directly to a Google Drive um, link, and then you can click on that and get the resources directly to your phone. All right, let's get into the actual weight loss portion here. 95% of fad diets fail. Why do you think that is? When you restrict food, your body res can resist weight loss by burning fewer calories, lowering your metabolism, and throwing off your metabolic hormones. I'm going to repeat that. When you, restrict your, when you restrict food, when you starve yourself, your body can resist weight loss by burning fewer calories, lowering your metabolism, and throwing off your metabolic hormones. Okay, so... I'll talk about fasting here in a second, but this is where for, for some people, and it could be a majority of people, depending on your body composition, fasting may not be your friend, okay? Especially if people are obese, fasting may not be your friend because you want to actually get your metabolism going. You want to stoke the fire, and this is where eating food is going to stimulate your appetite. You want to actually stimulate your appetite, not suppress it. it. Sounds opposite, right? It used to be it's like just suppress your appetite. You won't eat. You'll lose weight. Well, if you're already obese and your metabolism shot, that's not going to work. So there's a hormone. It's called ghrelin, G-H-R-E-L-I-N. Ghrelin is a hunger hormone that stimulates your appetite, prepares your body for food. Leptin is a hormone that controls your appetite by signaling your brain to stop eating. What happens is, I think I may have a leptin issue because I'll go to eat, I'm eating a lot, I'm eating a lot, I'm eating a lot. If you eat a lot in a short amount of time, like I do, you're not giving your body that time that about 20 minutes that leptin kicks in and is like, okay, I'm full, stop eating. Okay, that, that hormone can get messed up. Now, ghrelin is your hunger hormone. You want that to come up because you want your appetite to start to foster more to prepare your body for food. So whenever you feel your stomach start to rumble, like you're hungry or it starts to almost like squeeze or start to hurt, that's that ghrelin hormone. It's preparing. It's churning your stomach. It's getting the acids going and saying, I want to eat. So what's your body saying? Okay, it's time to eat now because at that point, your body's ready for food, saying, I'm ready here. I'm going to take the food. I'm going to digest it versus saying, no, I'm going to ignore that. I'm not going to eat. Okay, then, then you're going to affect your metabolism. And I'll, I'll touch more on this when we get to the slide on, on fasting. What I'm trying to say is, though, is that if you restrict yourself, for many people, your body's not going to do what you think it's going to do. It's very simple. If you want to lose weight, it's 80% your nutrition, what you're eating, it's 20% exercise. Yes, exercise is important. Yes, it is. Absolutely. And you can ramp yourself up, but it's mostly to do with what you're eating, the food that you're putting in your body. That's what's going to be impacting these hormones that I'm going to be talking about, is that food that you're putting in. And then think of your exercise as like putting on the afterburner. Like imagine a fighter jet flying. It's like 80% of the thrust is like your regular burner. And then exercise is like the afterburner. It's going to kick you into high gear. Okay, so that's important. It's good. It's going to kick you into high gear. But you really want to focus on your nutrition because that's 80% of it. So again, weight loss is about hormones. 
talked about leptin, talked about ghrelin. Let's talk about cortisol and serotonin. This is where we get into trouble because why do people fail? Why do these diets fail? They fail because of our emotions. That if we're being led by our emotions, by our feelings, we set ourselves up for failure. Because bad food in general for people, because it's how we grew up, because most of us grew up, they weren't eating well. Bad food feels good, okay? Whether it was going to McDonald's when you're a little kid with your grandparents, or was having that ice cream at the end of the day, or going out to ice cream with your family, or getting a burger or pizza or whatever else, or pasta, these feel good because when your cortisol is up, when your stress is up, your body wants a quick source of energy. It's like, I'm, I'm heightened, I'm under stress, I want a quick source of energy. What quicker source than carbohydrates and sugars? So your body turns to sugar, it turns to sugar and it wants it and it craves it. So what we gotta do is we have to regulate these hormones. Now the cool part is, is your food can also um, affect your serotonin level. Serotonin is your happy hormone your satisfaction hormone. 95% of the serotonin in your body is made in your gut. So it's directly influenced by the food that you're eating. So making sure that you're eating protein rich foods, good fats, good clean carbohydrates, that's gonna raise up, bump up those serotonin levels so you feel more satisfied and that's gonna help to balance out those cortisol levels as well. And we'll talk about that when we get to mindset too. All right, as promised, let's talk about meal timing and fasting. I would caution you, if you're pre-diabetic, diabetic, or have a history of it, are you know, extremely overweight or obese, so again, 41% of Americans, I believe 68% of Americans are overweight, 41% are obese. If you're falling into those categories, I would urge you to reconsider fasting, intermittent fasting. I would I like to tell people to start eating within the first 30 minutes to hour of the day. Get your metabolism going. Start that fire. Now, I've had discussions and debates with people, and they'll say, well, I do fasting. I do fine with them. Great. Good for you. If you do intermittent fasting, if it's working for you and you can do that, great. But if you're just starting out, and a lot of times people, they'll, re they'll hear about fasting, they'll hear about intermittent fasting, they want to lose weight quick. What I would urge you is to just start out with the basics. Focus on a good breakfast. Focus on a good lunch. Focus on a good dinner. Don't use all these life hacks yet. You're not there yet. Get your basics down. Get your habits started. Because if you go on this extreme change where you're not eating breakfast, not eating lunch, whatever, that might be too much too quick and your body's going to rebound. It's going to raise your cortisol levels. It's going to lead to emotional eating. I see it all the time. People say, I was doing great, then I went to that party and I ate the whole cake because I got stressed out or whatever else. So it happens. I would just suggest with getting back to the basics like I was talking about for the majority of people. And if you're doing great with fasting, congratulations, keep up with it. Um, it's not something that I talk about a whole lot. All right, meal timing. Again, first 30 minutes to hour of the day, you wanna start getting especially some good protein and fat. Uh, going in, in the day and then you want to have a cutoff time for nighttime whether that six o'clock could be a great time six thirty seven o'clock somewhere around there eating past seven thirty or even eight o'clock i think you're pushing it that's going a little too much you're going to be putting your body into a state where you could be waking up in the middle of the night craving food we do have a circadian rhythm you want to be done eating i would say at least two hours or even three hours before bedtime so that your body has time to start burning off those calories and food before you go to sleep and everything kind of quiets down. Things that can disrupt your metabolism outside of food is toxicity. And I want to really focus on this. And, and really, toxins are everywhere. Toxins disrupt our metabolism in a variety of ways, many different types that we encounter on a day to day. So we're going to be focusing on pesticides. So pesticides are found on non-organic produce and sprayed on crops like corn, flame retardants, are found on many fabrics and carpets. Phthalates, phthalates, <laughs> it's a silent P, they're found in many plastics, packaging, and toys. Uh, PFAs in many nonstick cookware and paper, so think Teflon. 
And then BPA is found in many plastics. So these things get into your body, they go into your fat cells, they get into your liver, and they disrupt your metabolism so that it, you know, this is where people, they feel like they're doing everything right and there's something else wrong going on in there. That could be a toxicity issue. So how do we identify it? Bare minimum, plastics that don't say BPA-free. So you wanna go for plastics that say BPA-free. In reality though, just avoiding plastic altogether is best, so especially in what we're drinking out of. So avoiding plastic water bottles, getting your own water bottle, whether it's stainless steel, glass, or ceramic. Avoiding fabric that says flame resistant. So like when we get pajamas for our kids, we don't get the flame resistant ones. You know, I don't, I don't know how much that would help them in a fire anyways, but we don't get anything that's been sprayed with a chemical that's flame resistant because that's not good for you. Avoiding nonstick cookware, stainless steel, again, stainless steel, ceramic, um, also cast iron are great. And then choosing organic produce. So here's the toxic top five. Unfiltered water, what you're drinking, genetically modified organisms, or what we now know as Roundup or glyphosate, household cleaners, cosmetics, aluminum and heavy metals. So let's start with filtered water. So there can be unattended byproducts within that have been found in water like mercury, water fluoridation, so fluoride and arsenic, pharmaceutical drugs flush down the drain, which people are not supposed to do. So if you have medications like Please, they're supposed to be disposed of properly. You can bring them to many pharmacies or doctor's offices or hospitals so they're disposed of properly. Do not put that down the drain because what we now know is that those medications, especially when it's um, hormone disrupting medications like the pill, that gets into people's water supply, that's going to that's gonna get into drinking water. Old pipes, so um, drinking water infrastructure across the nation is nearing the end of its useful life, according to the government, can many contain lead, copper, harmful bacteria, things like that. Now, copper I think is okay, but more of like the lead pipes or galvanized pipes, they've, they've seen problems with those as well. So this is where you wanna go for reverse osmosis water, reverse osmosis drinking water. Now, there's a few uh, people in the area, we use Martin Water and Conditioning. There's also Haller Enterprises, you can also do it yourself. If you're a handy man you, or handy woman, you can do it yourself by getting these things online. But again, Martin Water and Conditioning, they're great. You can do whole house filtration to reduce things like chlorine, uh, pharmaceuticals, and then reverse osmosis water for the water that you're drinking into your body. Genetically modified foods. So there's food like corn, soybeans, and cotton have they it hasn't been fully studied for long-term complications but half of european companies or european countries have opted out of gmos while the u.s has chosen not to regulate its use due to heavy lobbying by these large conglomerates and companies which is very sad because like they don't even want yeah, i'm like if genetic because they'll on one hand they'll say oh genetically modified foods are fine but on the other hand they'll say well we don't want it labeled because they'll say it could confuse the public if something's good for you, you'd think you'd want it labeled, wouldn't you? Like if organic, you'd want that out there. But they don't want it labeled because they don't want to lose their market share. They don't want to lose consumer products. So at the very least, we want to be looking for organic, non-sprayed foods. So warning, the term local doesn't mean much. When people say, oh, it's local, it's local corn. It's like, okay, it's right here, but it could be sprayed still, could have junk in it. Local doesn't mean anything. That's just a buzzword. You want to be going for certified organic, or if you know the local farm, you know that it's not been sprayed, so you're not getting those pesticides. So the food itself can be genetically modified to withstand things like Roundup, contain things in them called BT toxin as well. They, the food can contain toxins that'll kill certain um, bugs and critters, but not kill humans. But those same antibacterial properties can go into your body and affect your gut. And then it's also heavily sprayed with pesticides. And what we now know, I mean, you'd think this was a no-brainer, but they finally came out and said it in 2018, that things like Roundup, glyphosate, these pesticides make its way into the food supply on cereals, on breads, on corn, on these vegetables 
it's showing up there, which affects our gut health. So again, going organic. Wow, this is this was like a disturbing article. Um, let's see if I can zoom in here and read this. But basically, it said that they've now approved gen for the genetic modification of salmon to start to head to U.S. dinner plates. Now, thankfully, well, it's only been approved in a few different areas, but most grocery stores haven't picked this up yet, thankfully, but it could be coming soon. But it's mainly being picked up by restaurants and different distributors to restaurants. So again, you go to a restaurant, make sure that you're getting wild caught salmon. It's rare to get like locally, maybe at Har Harvest Grill in Lancaster or Harrisburg, you're gonna get that. But if you're just going to regular old restaurant, I would avoid the salmon because it's gonna be farmed raised. And you can see on, on the graphic on the left here, you can see the difference between farm raised salmon as a higher fat content, higher omega-6 content, which I talked about with beef, so it's not as recognizable or digestible by the body. Wild caught salmon, higher protein content, less calories overall, because you're not getting all that, that bad fat that's over here. And then you're also going to be getting a better balance of omega-3 to omega-6. So what they've done is they've changed the genetics of these fish <clears throat> and farm them so that they can grow uh, to their full maturity within 18 months versus 36 months. So they're cutting their maturity time in half. So you're coming, I mean, it just doesn't sound right. Like, do you want to fish? Oh, this fish was genetically modified, so it grew twice as fast as normally it would. Hmm, that's probably disturbing the natural order of things. I'm going to avoid that. I'm going to avoid putting that into my body. I don't want that, gen those genetics, that those cells, I don't want that stuff coming into my body affecting me. So I'm going to stick with the wild caught salmon. What they've done now is they can actually test beer because, you know, many of us, and I've even seen, you know, myself included, no, not anymore, but in the past, because you go to go out at a, at a party or you go to go out to a bar, things like that, you want it, you eat healthy, but then you order a drink. You order a drink, oh, I'll take a uh, Miller Lite, I'll take a Coors Light, I'll take a Stella, and you're avoiding the glyphosate and the Roundup and the, and the pesticides in your food, but then you're drinking it down in these beers and in these alcoholic beverages. So at very least, if you're gonna drink beer, you wanna go organic or just limit your beer consumption altogether because even the um, in a lot of these different beers, they're, they don't list their ingredients, but you can look them up online. They A lot of them contain corn syrup. Corn syrup not only sprayed with pesticides, but it's also genetically modified corn. So you're getting a GMO product and you're getting the glyphosate on the barley and the malt and things like that too. So you're getting a double hit with that. So the other thing with alcohol, <clears throat> is that it's gonna to lead to weight gain. Alcohol, I mean, the beer the beer belly, right? It's full of carbohydrates. It's derived from sugars. It's derived from corns and barleys and grains. And then you're drinking that. It's a very high calorie content. So if you're looking to lose weight, avoiding alcohol is key. <laughs> and I know that from personal experience. So alcohol, just a few stats here. Alcohol hinders the body's fat burning process. The liver prioritizes alcohol metabolism, affecting overall metabolic efficiency. So your liver is, instead of it being like, okay, I'm gonna start burning fat in your body, it's like, well, I gotta deal with this alcohol now. I have to clear this out so it doesn't have time for other stuff. Alcohol con consumption can stimulate appetite. Disruption of hunger-related signals may lead to overeating. If you ever had a few beers before or been out late, what do you wanna do? You wanna order a pizza? You wanna start eating chips? That's why at the bar they always set out like the beer nuts and things like that. Studies indicate a correlation between alcohol intake and cravings, specifically a heightened desire for salty and fried processed foods. So please consider eliminating or eliminating alcohol for healthy metabolism. Embrace the lifestyle that prioritizes nutritious choices for optimal well-being. But, but, and I'll add this but in, if you are looking for uh, what we found to be the cleanest form of alcohol, we would recommend social sparkling wine. So you can see it has just per can 88 calories, less than four grams carbs, and you can you can they actually post their ingredients: reverse osmosis water, organic sake, brown rice syrup, citric acid, yeast. So you can read through these things here. 
there is no glyphosate. It's certified organic. You're not getting the sprays and things like that. You're not getting the sugars because it's sweetened with stevia and the fruit juices, depending on the type that you get. So there's uh, cucumber hibiscus, there's apple, strawberry, and what was the elderflower apple. So you can also ask us if you're interested, ask us how you can get 15% off. We do have a promo code we can give you. You can go on their website. This is uh, used to be available in store, but now is just online. So you go to their, their website, you can order directly to your home. Again, ask us if you're interested to get 15% off. Funny story with this, uh, the time of recording this, it was last year. So in 2023, I go up to Canada to play in a hockey tournament. Now in a hockey tournament, like I'm, I'm sitting around, they're all guys, guys, everyone's having a beer at the end of the game. We're all talking, things like that. And I knew it was, as soon as I pull out this, I'm like, whatever, like I'm not, I'm, I'm confident myself. I pull out the pink one here. It was the, uh, the rosé. It's called the strawberry rosé, I believe it's called. And I pull that out. So it's a pink can with flowers all over it. And I just see all, everyone in the whole dressing room just like looking at me. And the one guy goes, what's that? And I go, oh, I know you're going to make fun of me. And, and actually they, it was pretty funny. They didn't make fun of me. They said, well, what's it taste like? And I gave one to the other guy. They're like, oh man, this is really good. And they all like went around and drank it. They're like, it tastes like, like a creamsicle or something. So sure enough, every time I go to Canada to go with friends, I thought I was going to get made fun of. I end up, I have to bring more extra of these because everyone else wants them because they actually taste good. They taste good. They taste clean. I noticed personally, you don't get, because it doesn't have sulfites. Because if you're wine drinkers out there, if you drink wine, it has sulfites in it or sulfates and it gives you a headache. So like, again, you, you drink 10 of these things, you're probably not gonna feel great the next day, right? That's called a hangover, but you're gonna be reducing the toxicity in your body so that you can still go out and have a good time while drinking responsibly and drinking a, a clean form uh, of, a, of a alcoholic drink. All right, I want you guys to pull out your phone again. This is an excellent resource, excellent website. This is going to bring you to the EWG or the Environmental Working Group Cleaners Guide. And what you'll do here, so go ahead and pull out your phone, pull out the camera app, hover over that QR code. And what this is going to do is this is going to pull up a guide where you can search for the cleaners that you're using at home. So you could type in like the name like Tide or Gain or whatever, and it will give you a rating on you know, all the different toxins and junk that could be in there that could be affecting your health. And you want to start moving towards healthier options that you're using. Because again, you're spraying these chemicals on your eating surfaces. You're putting chemicals in your hair, shampoo. Uh, you're using bars of soap, body wash, deodorant, cosmetics. This stuff's going on your body. So the EWG, that guide is not only just for cleaners, but for cosmetics, for personal care products, shave creams, things like that. So you're making sure you're getting healthy stuff. Now, just to make it a little easier for you, we would recommend the brand Attitude. Now, they're an excellent brand. We've been using, we just started using it recently for laundry detergent. We have been using it for years for our children's soaps. So it's like a foaming um, soap for kids' hair in the bath and for hair and body. And it's the cleanest form. So it's actually EWG certified. So the EWG, they have a rating from like A plus through F, okay? And then the top rating is called EWG certified where they put their stamp on approval. And they've put their stamp on approval on all of the Attitude line of products. So they have personal care products, shampoos, soaps, laundry detergent. I would say if you're starting anywhere, <clears throat> start with your, obviously your soap you're putting on your body, that's obvious your laundry detergent because the, your clothes are going on your body and especially your dishwasher detergent because your dishwasher detergent now seventh generation is a brand it has gone more mainstream recently so the quality has wavered a little bit but seventh generation does still make a high quality dishwasher detergent that works and is also rated i believe it's an a plus rating on ewg so seventh generation we use that for our dishwasher at home because what happens is dishwashers get so hot, it vaporizes the water. It's also gonna vaporize the soap. 
And you know that steam that comes out of dishwasher, that gets into the air. And you're gonna be breathing that. You don't wanna be breathing those chemicals, the bad stuff, those toxins. You wanna to make sure that you're getting good quality stuff. Okay. Cosmetics. Uh, this is more of a Dr. Krista question or a Haley question. We do have resources available again over to your left on cosmetics and, and consumer guides on that. The main brands that my wife is using is Crunchy and Well People. Crunchy and Well People. Uh, my wife has an affiliate page through Crunchy. If you'd like to access, access that, just ask one of our staff members and it'll guide you through, you know, all the different foundations and glosses and things like that. Because again, women can ingest up to five pounds of makeup per year. Five pounds per year goes into your body. Because at the end of the day, if it's not on there as much or you have to keep putting on your lipstick, where's that going? It's going into your body. And then Well People is another one that she's been using recently. And these do not contain things like uh, lead, parabens, a lot of these toxins which cake onto your body and get into your skin. And she finds that um, th these are products that actually work well too. Aluminum and heavy metals. So let's talk about this. So heavy metals like arsenic, lead, mercury, and others, they're all around us. They're in common medications and even in some vaccines. They're in the water that we drink and the products we use every day. So several studies have shown that toxic metal exposure causes long-term health problems in the human population. Although the acute and chronic effects are, are known for some metals, little is known about the health impact of like mixing them together. So we know about them individually that they're bad, what we don't know is that now we're mixing them together so much. So um, common sources of aluminum are in like baby formula. Remember there's like big recalls for baby formula and stuff for heavy metals. Baked goods, processed foods, antiperspirants, over-the-counter prescription antacids, and also in vaccines. So I'm going to show you here. These are, this is a list of just some of the vaccines that I, that I looked up that have aluminum in them. Now the argument will be, well, it's just, it's a small amount, but what, what they do is the reason that aluminum is in vaccines and it'll say it right on the CDC's website is to stimulate the immune system. Now the words, that's a loose word, stimulate. Basically the vaccine contains, well, an old school vaccine, not the new school vaccines, will contain a, an attenuated or a weakened virus. You put that in your body. What they have to do is they have to put the aluminum in there to upset the body, to upset the immune system, to get it to react to what's in the vaccine. So it's basically like throwing a rock at the beehive. So aluminum in and of itself is bad for your immune system. It activates it. It makes it upset. And that can lead to an immune system that's overactive or tired or exhausted. And when your immune system's overactive, tired, and exhausted, you get sick more easy, frequent colds, allergies, and asthma because you're, you have an overactive immune system. So again, these are some of the vaccines that have, that have um, aluminum in them. So Tdap, so diphtheria, pertussis, Hib, form of influenza, affects kids under five, five-year-olds and under get this, Hep A and Hep B, HPV, the common brand name for this would be Gardasil, meningitis B, Prevnar, commonly given to adults, especially older adults, technically the pneumonia shot, and then TD or the tetanus shot as well. Now I would urge you to click on this QR code and it's going to bring you to the CDC vaccine excipient summary. Meaning you're going to go on there and you can read for yourself. This is doing your own research. So don't take it from me. This will bring you directly to their website, to a guide, a PDF, that will show all the ingredients and in all the vaccines, childhood vaccines and adult vaccines. So you can make your own decisions on what you wanna be putting in your body or not, or in your child's body or not, because you do have choices. And if you choose to get it or not, it's technically it's not in any of my business, but I wanna give you this so that you understand some of the uh, ingredients that are in these things and that you should be aware of. All right, all this to say, because this can seem like a lot, this could be a little overwhelming, a lot of information, a lot of toxicity out there. How do we get this stuff out of our body? How do we deal with this on a day-to-day -day basis? 
Well, minerals, vitamins, different acids are great. So typically it's dark leafy green veggies, fresh fruit juices, vegetable juices, lean meats. Eating the advanced plan or the core plan is gonna be your number one way to detox. You can detox through the healthy food that you're eating. But you can also supplement as well. So here's some of the nutrients needed to repair the cell. Selenium helps with DNA repair and synthesis. Alpha lipoic acid is called the network antioxidant. It regulates vitamin C, vitamin E, glutathione, neutralizes free radicals, and chelates, we've heard of chelation, chelates metal so that they can be removed from the body. So it's found in things like red meats, spinach, and broccoli. Glycine, it helps to produce antioxidants, supports liver detoxification. It's found in red meats, organ meats, fish, bone broth, etc. Botanicals, regenerative organ, organic milk thistle, regenerative organic eric, Arceola, <laughs> garlic, clove, and, and, and spinach as well. So these are all good botanicals. Now notice here, guys, this is really important. I'm not here to beat up on vegans or vegetarians, but notice that a lot of these detoxing uh, properties are found in organ meats and meat products and seafood. So we need to be eating these things. It's important. Our bodies are genetically designed to eat meat. We are not herbivores. We are not a gorilla. You're not an elephant. You are an omnivore. You're like genetically, you are designed to eat meat. Like it or not, you cannot synthesize B12 on your own. You cannot synthesize arachidonic acid. Like you need to have these foods come into your body. Okay, the meat. So you want to get good quality meat and it helps to detox you as well. Now, <clears throat> if you're vegan or vegetarian, okay, and you're not eating those things, that's fine, that's where you want to supplement. And it's also important if you are eating meat that you do and you know you want to lose weight, you want to help to detox, this is where you can help your body out by, by supplementing. So this is a new risk supplement, cell repair. So unleash the power of cellular defense against free radicals with cell repair. This helps you to protect against free radicals, so prevent cellular aging. Free radicals in, in basically induce cellular aging, supports a healthy liver, it reduces oxidative damage, promotes healthy inflammation, because inflammation is important. You want to promote healthy inflammation so that it comes and it goes, and then it boosts immune function. So it's um, it has the pure path standard. What does pure path mean? It sets itself apart from competitors with regenerative organic ingredients. So this again comes from regenerative farming. So it has a few things, antioxidants, like uh, vitamin A, e, e, G, C, G, and a remarkable formula, ultimate defense against oxidative stress. This can be picked up in the office. Now next would be Max Fit. This is great, especially if you are exercising. This helps for weight and muscle support, enhanced energy and endurance, and regulates stress hormones. The main ingredients is decaffeinated green coffee bean extract to help with blood glucose levels. Green bean extract is help with your blood sugar. Uh, botanical ashwagandha to help with stress management and cortisol regulation. So ashwagandha helps to lower stress levels. And then glutamine and creatine help in exercise recovery because creatine, carnitine, glutamine, they help to bring water and nutrients into the muscles. I take this one myself and this is not a widely used supplement, but the people who have used it notice, they're like, I notice like I'm getting a better pump at the gym, the people who work out. I'm like, yeah, that's the creatine. They're like, I notice I'm recovering better at the gym. I'm like, yeah, that's the glutamine. Or I notice that, you know, my people with diabetic, I notice my blood sugar has gone down a little bit. I'm like, yeah, that's the decaffeinated green bean extract. And those are the, those properties that are working for you there. So we are going to offer a discount here. Now, this is for anyone at any time. So if you're listening to this, you know, two years from now, one year from now, the day of, if you get this bundle together, you get 10% off. So not individually, but together, you get 10% off. The reason I'm doing that, a couple of reasons. One, so you get all three and you're, you're getting it. And then the other one is like, if this is replaying in the office thousands of times, I can't just be giving people 10% off all the time. It's not economical for us because there's not a high... It's not a big margin on these supplements, okay? 
So this is the Burn Fat Restore Vitality Bundle. You got your bone broth, protein, chocolate, or vanilla. You got your Max Fit to help with your exercise goals. And then you have your Cell Repair to help to reduce toxic burden in your body. So if you'd like to get all three together, you do get 10% off. So the savings are significant there. Again, the bone broth protein is excellent. It's good for in smoothies. It's good for a snack to bump up your protein levels. The Max Fit for exercise blood sugar regulation, and cell repair to help to flush out those toxins. All right, I want to go through eight tips here. I haven't done this in a long time, but um, here's some grocery store shopping tips that you can have uh, to help you through the grocery store. So number one, scheduling a specific day and time. For me personally, like we usually go once in a weekend on a Saturday or Sunday, and then I'll either go Monday or Wednesday after my morning shift. So typically we hit up Whole Foods over the weekend and then I'll go to uh, usually to Stoffers or to Giant on the way back after a morning shift on a Monday or a Wednesday. It's important because emergency shopping encourages bad decisions. You know the, the term you don't want to go to the store hungry. Well you also don't want to go just to buy like one or two things that you forgot. You want to schedule it out and have a list so that you have these things on hand because what happens is you go to the store and you're hungry or you're just looking to buy one thing we well, end up buying half the store and again 73 percent of the store is full of junk so you want to go on a specific day and time and have a plan to do it number two this is very well known shop around the perimeter of the store that's where the most natural less altered foods are so like the perimeter of the store you're thinking your dairy your eggs your, your meats, your veggies, that's all around the perimeter in the middle because that's where the refrigerators are basically. They're attached to the wall, so they're plugged in. In the middle of the store, you want to avoid because that's where all the ultra processed food. Now, there are some organic options, things like that in the middle, but that's a good rule of thumb is to stick to the perimeter. Getting more foods where there are no labels. What, what's in chicken? What are the ingredients in chicken? What's the ingredients in a banana? What's the ingredients in a pineapple or a tomato? So you want to get foods where what you see is what you get. That's your best, easiest way to read ingredients because you already know what it is. Read labels. Don't just look at the, like the nutrition facts. You actually want to read the ingredients. Turn it around. Read the ingredients. Don't believe the hype. Don't believe the marketing. It's going to say organic, gluten-free, best thing in the world, blah, blah, blah on the front. Turn it around and read what's actually in it so that you know what, what you're putting into your body. The fewer the ingredients, the better as a rule of thumb. So it's less processed and it's uh, gonna have less ingredients in there. So you're not getting as much of a mix in your body. You wanna just get the purest, simplest form of the, of the ingredient that you're getting. Looking for natural ingredients, not chemicals. Ideally, if you can't read it, understand it, like if it's got long, big words that sound very scientific, typically those are preservatives that are meant to keep that food um, shelf ready for a long time. So if you're in the middle of the aisles and you're reading something that you can't understand, put it back, go to the outside of the aisles and get back, get back to where you should be in the store. Number seven, beware of the marketing. Like I said, low fat, low in calories, gluten-free, organic, blah, 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 blah. It could still contain a bunch of junk. It could still contain a lot of sugar. It could still be zero protein or way too much bad fat. So you want to, again, read what's actually in it. Even if it says, you know, you love the buzzwords. It says it's non-GMO. It says it's organic. I've done this myself. Then I turn around and it's full of, full of way too much stuff that I don't want in my body. And lastly, number eight, watch out for sugars ending in O's, dextrose, maltose, sucrose, hydrolyzed or autolyzed ingredients. Those are fats that have been altered by man. They've been processed. They've been heated up. They've been destroyed. Artificial sweeteners, again, the pink packs, the blue packs, the yellow packs, hydrogenated or high, partially hydrogenated oils. So like coconut oil at room temperature is solid. Avocado oil at room temperature is a liquid. But what's the ingredients in avocado oil? It should just say avocado oil. That's it. Not autolyzed, not hydrolyzed, not refined, not hydrogenated. It just, it is what it is. Less ingredients, the better, especially with fats. All right, let's get into some mindset here. So 
you've heard the saying like it's not my fault it's just my genetics I'm just getting old what are you telling yourself how are you getting in your own way what can you do to get out of your own way because a lot of times <laughs> I, not even a lot of times pretty much all the times like when we a diet doesn't work or a food plan doesn't work or you don't lose the weight it's not the plan's fault it's not the food's fault whose fault is it it's your fault so we just have to realize that like okay I'm the one who's doing this to myself now I'm not trying to bring more shame into the picture here but just realizing like I'm trying to empower you here is that you're in control you're in the driver's seat in your body you're in the driver's seat for your health and you can get yourself in and out of any situation you want to start to build skill power versus willpower okay this is going to be kind of happy and sad at the same time here here's the good part over time as you start to build these habits over time over time over time it's going to become automatic to you and it's going to become easier for me personally i don't have to sit at the grocery store and read labels for an hour anymore i used to i don't i know what i'm getting i know what i'm looking for i've been doing this long enough I know exactly what I'm getting in the grocery store. I'm in, I'm out as fast as you're in and out of the grocery store, but I'm getting healthy stuff. Okay, it's a habit for me. Eating healthy food, healthy snacks, that's become a habit for me and my family because that's all we have in our house. It didn't start that way though. When you're making these changes, it takes time to start to incorporate. So I would recommend a great book. I, I love this book. It's the only book that I've read because I'm, I'm not the biggest reader. I do read. But typically when I read a book, I'm like, I'm done with the book. I'm never going to pick it up again. I feel like I have a good memory. I'm not sure, but I just, yeah, that's, I get bored. But this book, it's called The One Thing. It's the only book I've read more than once. No, that's not true. But it's one recently that I've read more than once. And I love it because you open it up and there's no introduction. There's no about the author. There's no preface. It just gets right into chapter one. It's like, bang, we're getting started. I'm like, man, this, this guy knows my love language, efficiency. And it's all about picking one thing that you're going to do. Many of you listening to this, you hear me say this. I've talked about this a lot, pretty much all my webinars, but it's so important. What's the one thing that you could do such that everything else would be easier or unnecessary? Meaning, if you want to lose weight, what's if you could just do one thing to lose weight just one you can only do one what would it be and then do that one thing people would say why well, stop snacking after seven o'clock i'd be like, great just do that i was talking with someone recently it was two weeks ago they said i have a list for the new year i have a list of six things i'm going to do this new year that to change my health and i looked at the list of them i said pick one just do one and then like and, and they're like well i really just need to do once we went through the list we started crossing things off they're like basically if i just did this one this is like the first domino if you just did this one all the others are going to fall in line and then they're like how much easier is that instead of having a list of seven things you have a list of one thing so just do that one thing first the rest will follow but just do that one thing for some of you listening it's like okay maybe it's you need to get your family scheduled for an adjustment Maybe you need to do your home care exercises better. Maybe you need to cut out sugar. Maybe you need to cut out snacking after eight o'clock. Maybe you need to get the, the protein powder or the, the nutrition bundle with the max fit and the cell repair so you start getting those good supplements into your body. Choose your own one thing, one thing from this talk and start to do that. Because over time, it's gonna get easier. Because in your first month, you start trying to lose weight, especially, it's all about your willpower. I just, I want to do this. I want this. I want this. I want this. But once you hit a habit formation, if you're lucky, it can be 21 days. That's not the case for most people, though. The average person is 66 days. I know this from personal experience. I took me, I don't know, I think it took me like 80 days or 90 days when I was losing weight. It took forever. I was like, this is difficult. This is hard. I crave this food. I want this. I want this snack. I want to do that. But once you kick that in, that habit forms, and you don't even have to think about it anymore, and you're in a good place. You're in a really good place. You don't have to think about it. So again, if you're just starting your home care, just focus on doing your neck tractions twice a day, 30 reps each or 20 reps each. Pick a number. has to be over 20. Just do that. 
for the next month. If you're lucky, you'll kick in a habit. If you're not lucky like me, it'll be an average of 66 days and then it's going to kick in for you. Get your, get your habits working for you instead of against you. All right. A local hero, a local hero. I've been re I watched the, uh, mini series. I hadn't watched it in years, years and years and years. I've been watching the mini series band of brothers. It showcases the 101st Airborne Division, a company known as E, e Company or Easy Company. The head of that company was Major Richard Winters or Major Dick Winters. And I remember when I watched it when I was younger, I remember them saying, oh, he's from Pennsylvania. Uh, and I looked it up. He's actually from Ephrata. Lives, lived in, born and raised, lived in Ephrata for years, ended up moving to Hershey area, um, went to World War II. And He's like a living legend. When you watch this show, it's just amazing. He's like a real life Captain America. No joke. I mean, he's just an absolute hero in what he did um, to defend freedom and, and to help people and to just defend our country. It's, it's amazing. And there's, I would suggest visiting this. This is in Africa here. We went just the, uh, the other week here and we visited and it was amazing tribute that they have. This is at the head of the, the rail trail in Ephrata that goes from Ephrata to Lidditz. And they have a great, they call it the, uh, the Winter's Leadership Memorial. And they explain his life, where he was born, where he lived, everything like that, his exploits in World War II. But then also his leadership, like word, you know, slogans that he lived by. And I believe there's 12 of them there. And I think it was number three that stuck out to me. He said, Stay in top physical shape. Physical stamina is the root of mental toughness. Physical stamina is the root of mental toughness. And this was not only, you know, this was shared by him a long time ago. This is what he taught his men. This is all sh shared by uh, gurus around the world. So like most people have heard of Anthony Robbins or Tony Robbins. He's a motivational coach. He says the quickest way to change your psychology, to change your mindset is to change your physiology. You start doing push-ups, you start exercising, you go for a walk, you go for a run. There is nothing, there is nothing that they've researched that's better for your mental outlook, things like depression, the anxiety, than exercise. They test, they had people, they had a group of people, they were on two different antidepressants on the same time, and then the other group, group exercise. The exercise group fared better through combating depression than the group on two different prescriptions at the same time. So just by exercising, you're going to begin to change your state of mind. And the reason is, is because it's going to release the host of endorphins that are so good for you. Host of hormones like endorphins, um, adrenaline, also serotonin, and then also oxytocin. So those are those hormones that are like the love hormones, the exercise hormones. They're so good for you and they make you feel good. That's why you hear of like the runner's high. People say, I feel so good when I go to the gym. And here's the thing. You can't allow yourself to be basing your life on how you feel or your feelings. You have to focus on what you're doing. Now that can sound a little shallow, but it's called cognitive, cognitive behavioral therapy says that we have to do something and then the feelings come later. We tend to do the opposite. We want to feel good so that we go to the gym. It's like, I want to feel good, then I'll go to the gym. It's like, well, it's the opposite. Once you go to the gym, then you're going to feel good. You only feel like how you are right now. So right now, like I'm doing this talk, I feel good. I feel inspired. I feel a lot of energy. I feel great because I'm in the middle of doing it. Now leading up to it, I might have felt nervous. I might have felt a little, you know, shy or whatever else. But like, I can't allow those feelings to dictate my life. Once I get started, then I'll feel good. Okay. And not just our feelings, but also our thought life. And I was listening to a podcast recently. And the, the biggest thing that stuck out for me is they said, you need to start talking to yourself as you would a best friend. So if your best friend was going through the same situation as you are right now, what would you say to them? I know that you wouldn't say what you're saying to yourself because we are we can be so mean, um, just spiteful, vindictive to ourselves. We treat ourselves like garbage. The thoughts in our head like... If you're anything like me, you're hard on yourself. 
and you can go have those rehash those conversations over and over or what you should have said or what you should have done or you could feel shame and guilt or anxiety or whatever else the best way to start changing that is by speaking to yourself as if you were talking to your best friend and i i since listening to that podcast it was a couple months ago i started to do that more so you know say you get in a tiff with your spouse or you have a bad interaction with your kids or a bad interaction at work, what would you say to your to your best friend and be like, hey man, you, you give yourself perspective. You know, I understand that was hard. You know, that was difficult. That conversation, what you went through was hard. But hey, you know what? You can do it. You're powerful. You're strong. You've been through it before. Start speaking to yourself like that. Trust me, it's not easy at first. It might be difficult at first. It might feel a little awkward at first. But if you start speaking to yourself or at least writing it down, what you would say to your best friend if you were talking to yourself, you're going to start to notice big changes in your outlook and your mindset and how you treat yourself as well. All right, as we close out here, I just want to give you guys a few action steps. So Haley is back and she's ready to help you reach your health goals. We have two, two main programs to offer. One is our Max Metabolics program where we offer uh, blood, urine, and stool testing to test your hormones, your vitamin deficiencies, minerals, um, all sorts of, you know, sex hormones, all sorts of different things in order to help you move to the next level with your health. So if you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling like, okay, I've done this before, or I've made these changes before, and I'm feeling stuck, there could be something else going on. So that's where having the Max Metabolics program and for her to help you with that is gonna be key to getting your health back back in line. And then also, if you want to, she also offers uh, for a fee, one-on-one -on -one nutrition coaching. So hour-long coaching where she'll go through meal planning with you. She'll help you meal plan. She'll help you set up a, a guide for yourself. She'll help you go through what your goals are, what your weight loss goals are, and, and kind of walk you through how you can achieve that one-on-one um, -on -one with her. So if you're interested in the Max Metabolics program, please click on this QR code right here. This is going to bring you to our YouTube video, which will outline everything that the Max Metabolics program has to offer, what we're testing, how it can impact you, and then also other testimonies of people who've gone through the program and seen amazing changes in their health. All right, and lastly, um, yeah, you can contact Haley directly. Her email is here, maximize.patients at gmail.com. You can also text the number on uh, our office number, 717-627-0365. And those are the, that's the number that you get your text reminders. You can reply to that and just say, I would like to get in contact with Haley and we'll make sure that she reaches out to you right away. So what she's offering is a free 15 minute phone or in-person nutritional consult, free for 15 minutes. And that'll be a gateway, a good, good way to see, okay, where you need to go, whether it's to get resources or whether you want to start a max metabolics program or schedule a nutritional consult. So here's your action steps as I close uh, for this talk. You're going to choose your one thing, choose the one thing you want to do, whether that's, you know, getting a supplement, doing your home care, getting your kids scheduled for an exam or your spouse, scheduling a free consultation with Haley, gathering your resources, whether it's about the advanced plan, the core plan, swap list, it's all here. So again, to your left, the resource wall in the office um, will have that uh, available for you so that you can grab some of these resources. And you also want to establish a realistic time frame. This is hugely important. You want to set yourself up for success. If you want to lose any amount of weight, shoot for one pound a week to be realistic. So if you want to lose 30 pounds, that's 30 weeks. What's that? That's seven months. That's not a one month thing. That's not a two month thing. You want to be realistic here. You want to lose 20 pounds. It's 20 weeks. That's almost half a year. Like you have to guys, you got to think long term with this stuff. It takes time for you to get this place in your body. It's going to take time to correct it. So establishing a realistic time frame, will, you'll avoid frustration. There's so many books out there about 30 day challenge, 21 days to change your life. That's that just gets you started. The 30 days is what gets you started, and then you got to keep moving towards those goals. And then again, you can schedule a consultation with Haley. 
I hope this talk has helped you. We are available for, for you to make changes. I realize that this is a lot of information at once, but as you start to integrate these five essentials into your life and into your family's life, you're gonna see amazing changes, not only in your health, in your family's health, in your circle of influences, so we can start to change this country's health for the better. So signing off, Dr. Greg. Have a terrific day.